Hey everybody, this is Mr. Longo, and in this video I'm going to cover how you complete the square to find an equation in vertex form. So we already had a video that talked about how to complete the square. This video is one of the videos that is going to take it a step further where we actually use completing the square for something, in this case is for vertex form. The other thing we would use it for would be to solve an equation. So to complete a square, um, again, we've already talked about this, and the first thing you're going to want to do is only get the x's by themselves. We want to remove our constant for now. So what I like to do is just say that x squared plus 6x, and then I leave a little bit of space, is equal to a negative 3. And all I did was subtract the negative 3 over to another side, but I also want to leave a little bit of space here. Now remember, to complete a square, what we do is take half of the 6 and then we square it. So half of 6 is 3 squared is 9. So we're going to add 9. Now remember, in another video that talked about how we complete the square, we have to balance the equation. So you can't add 9 to one side and not the other and expect your equation to still be balanced. Okay, So that's what that step was. Um, and then what we're going to do is simplify. So we have x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 6. Now the next step was writing it as the square of a binomial. So x squared plus 6x plus 9 can be written as x and then half of your b value. So half of a positive 6 is a positive 3. And we square the parentheses and that's equal to 6. So now our last step is to just get this in vertex form. So we would say y is equal to the quantity x plus 3 squared minus 6. And remember, in case you forgot, vertex form is y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k, where your vertex is h comma k. So once we complete the square, we can state that our vertex is opposite of what's inside, so we have a negative 3, comma, our outside, negative 6. Okay? And that's how we use completing the square to write an equation in vertex form. Okay? Now, we also talked about what would happen if there is a different leading coefficient. So we start the same by saying negative 3x squared plus 6x is equal to 5. So we want to add 5 to the other side. And now you cannot complete the square if the leading coefficient is something other than 1. So we have to factor out our leading coefficient. Negative 3, leaving us with x squared minus 2x. And again, leave a little bit of space. Close your parentheses is equal to 5 and a little bit of space. To find this, half of 2 is 1. Squared is 1. So we're going to add 1. Now remember, your equation needs to be balanced. So by balancing the equation, I did not add 1 to the left side. I actually added a negative 3 to the left side because remember, if we were to distribute this negative 3, that would be a minus 3. So before you balance the equation, you have to multiply your leading coefficient to the number you just found, your c value. So negative 3 times 1 would be a negative 3 that we're going to put on the other side. Okay, and now the rest, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to write this as the square of a binomial now. So negative 3 times x, half of our b value, will give us a negative 1. Squared is equal to 2. Now we're just going to bring that 2 back over. So our vertex form is y is equal to a negative 3 times the quantity of x minus 1 squared minus 2. And to state our vertex, it's opposite of what's inside, comma, the outside. So our vertex is 1, comma, negative 2. Okay? And that's it. Now, this next example is going to be challenging, not because it has a different way of doing it. The steps are the exact same. The only thing that makes this complicated is the fact that you're going to have nasty fractions to work with. Now... I know there's going to be nasty fractions. I'll show you why in a second. If you do not like fractions, or if you're afraid of fractions, grab your graphing calculator. Your graphing calculator loves using fractions. Okay? Um, so, same first step. 
for this next example, we're going to have 2x squared plus 5x is equal to 9. Now we have to factor out the leading coefficient. It's not a GCF. The first term has to be completely removed. So we are going to factor out a 2. Now that leaves us with x squared plus half of 5 is 5 halves x. A little bit of space is equal to 9. A little bit of space. So. What is half of 5 halves? 5 fourths. What's 5 fourths squared? 25 sixteenths. Now I know how to do that. If you are a little bit unsure of what to do, then use your graphing calculator. I promise you that if you take 5 halves and type it in your calculator, it will give you 2.5. And once you square it and change that back to a fraction, it's going to give you 25 sixteenths. And also, we need to multiply 25 sixteenths by 2 before we add it to the other side. So 2 times 25 sixteenths is 50 sixteenths, which is actually going to reduce to 25 eighths. So we have to add 25 eighths to the other side. So again, I did not do anything different. The only challenging part is that we're working with nasty fractions. So now the next step is the same. 2 times we have to write that as the square of a binomial. No problem. We have x and half of b. So half of 5 halves is 5 fourths. Squared is equal to, now remember 9 can be written as 72 eighths. So we have a common denominator. So that's going to be equal to 97 eighths. Subtract him back over. We have y is equal to 2 times x plus 5 fourths squared minus 97 eighths, so we have a vertex of a negative 5 fourths comma negative 97 eighths. All right, so again, steps identical. The answer is just ugly because we have big nasty fractions. Like I said, your graphing calculator can handle them, so if you're not a big fan of the fractions, get your calculator. Um, this next one is not nearly as hard as the last one. Um, now I would like you to pause the video and give this last one um, a try on your own. As soon as you're ready, click play and I will go through it with you step by step. So again, nothing has changed. We have 1 half x squared minus 4x is equal to a negative 10 after we move the 10 over to the other side. Factor out a 1 half and you should have x squared minus 8x, a little bit of space, is equal to a negative 10 with a little bit of space. If you just freaked out because you have a 2 here, I want you to remember what you're doing. When you factor something out, you are dividing. So 4 divided by 1 half is 8. Remember, dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay? It's a very popular mistake when you factor out a fraction. So half... Oh, so then we're just going to take half of the negative 8 and square it. We're going to get 16. Before we balance our equation, 16 times 1 half, we would be adding 8 to the other side. Okay? And the rest of the steps are the same. So we're going to have y is equal to 1 half of x, half of a negative 8 is a negative 4, squared. And then that's equal to a negative 2. So our final answer is y is equal to 1 half of x minus 4 squared plus 2 with a vertex at 4 comma 2. All right, that's it for this video on how to use completing the square to write an equation in vertex form. This is Longo and I'm out. See you, bye.